Mr. President. The Senator from Nevada. Thank you. Mr. President, when I traveled to Israel in 2019, I saw with my own eyes the Iron Dome system, up close and in person. I met with the brave soldiers who operate and protect it, young men and women, in many cases no older than 18 or 19 years old. Iron Dome is a missile defense system that has successfully intercepted thousands of missiles fired by terrorist groups like Hamas at Israeli population centers. It has protected Jews, Christians, Muslims, protected them all from harm and saved countless lives, Israelis and Palestinians alike. This incredible feat of defense technology is a shining example of the unbreakable U.S.-Israel Security Partnership. The U.S. Army is in the process as well of acquiring Iron Dome batteries and tested the system as recently as August, meaning this life-saving technology could also protect American men and women in uniform from a variety of missile threats. Let me be clear. I want to emphasize the word defense. Iron Dome is a purely defensive system. It's a shield, a miraculous shield against death and destruction, one that America should be proud to help support and has supported across both Democratic and Republican administrations and in Democratic and Republican Congresses for over a decade. Iron Dome saves lives. Iron Dome prevents an escalation of violence, and Iron Dome provides a critical window for diplomacy. This past May, terrorist organizations launched over 4,400 rockets at Israel. That's right, 4,400 rockets. Iron Dome was key to preventing 90% of these rockets from reaching their targets, saving the lives of innocent Israeli citizens. We should be proud to support this technological feat that has protected countless lives and will continue to do so. My trip to Israel and my visit to see Iron Dome, well, it's on my mind today because Israel needs our help and they need it now. This summer, Following the barrage of rocket fire, those 4,400 missiles that Israel had to endure, and which the Iron Dome protected Israel against, Israel made an emergency request to the United States for security assistance in order to replenish and prepare the Iron Dome defense system to defend against future potential conflicts. To Israel's north, on the border with Lebanon, which I went to see just two years ago, Hezbollah, an Iranian-backed terrorist organization, is estimated to possess over 100,000 missiles. Those 100,000 missiles pointed at Israel, including thousands of precision missiles. If war were ever to break out again between Israel and Lebanon, as it did in 2006, Iron Dome would play a crucial role in protecting civilians, all civilians in Israel. Just a few months ago, I joined Democratic and Republican colleagues in urging continued support for Iron Dome. Support for Iron Dome is about the integrity of the U.S.-Israel relationship. There's always been strong bipartisan support for the U.S.-Israel Defense Partnership. That bipartisan support continues today. Failure, failure to fund this critical defensive tool would be catastrophic for Israel and would result in lives lost. It would lead to more conflict, and it would weaken the bond between the United States and our greatest ally in the Middle East. We must take action to ensure that this program remains fully operational. The House of Representatives has already passed legislation in an overwhelmingly bipartisan basis to fund Iron Dome. It was a vote, a vote of 424 and only nine against. So now it's the Senate's turn to act. Earlier this week, my colleague, Senator Menendez, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said this, and I quote, there is no 
conceivable reason why anyone in this chamber or on either side of the aisle should stand in the way of U.S. support for this life-saving defense to be fully ready for the next attack. He is exactly right. Opposition to Iron Dome is contrary to U.S. national security interests and violates the commitment that the U.S. government made to Israel. We have an opportunity to rebuild the Iron Dome shield, to support the security of our most important ally in the Middle East, and to save lives. But we must take action right here and right now. So, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that at a time to be determined by the majority leader, following consultation with the Republican leader, the Senate proceed to consideration of calendar number 140, H.R. 5323, that there be up to two hours for debate, that upon the use or yielding back of time, the bill be considered read a third time, and that the Senate vote on passage of the bill without intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator from Kentucky. Reserving the right to object, as we speak, the Taliban is regaining control, has control over most of Afghanistan. They're brutalizing women, kicking women out of school. Uh, women will no longer be participating in the government. It is really just unconscionable that Democrats insist that money be there to give to the Taliban. Any person who believes and truly believes that the Taliban is a menace to women's rights and to women in a civilized world should join me in saying we should make sure that no money ever goes to the Taliban. When Secretary Blinken was asked about this, he said that if there is cooperation and if they meet expectations, the $6 billion and some say up to $10 billion available for the previous government will be given to the Taliban who violently overthrew this government. We were asking something very simple. We could fund Iron Dome today. Make sure that everybody who listens to this understands this is being blocked by Democrats who don't want to pay for it. We have a proposal that would have proposed a billion dollars today for Iron Dome, but it would have been paid for by taking money out of an account that has been allocated and that Secretary Blinken has indicated he will give to the Taliban if they behave. So I think it's a real problem, and it's a problem of this body that the cavalier nature of just letting our country pile on $30 trillion of debt. You ask how we got here? We got here a billion dollars at a time. So rarely do we have an, 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 an episode or a time where we can object. You know, I would object to a trillion if it were on the floor. I would object to 50 billion on the floor. But the billion dollars ought to be paid for, and there are so many pay-fors. But this is why government grows by leaps and bounds and becomes more and more wasteful over time. So I, I do object. Mr. President. Senator from Nevada. Mr. Paul's objection is unacceptable. He knows it's unacceptable. This is no time for political games. It could jeopardize the support for our allies and people in need of life-saving assistance. I challenge all my Republican colleagues to let us take up the House-passed bill, passed 420 to 9, and fund Iron Dome for our national security, our national security, as well as Israel's. I yield.